Okay. This is my dream Yankee offseason. Now, if you haven't seen my other video on what I think the Yankees should do, it's in the description down below. Take a look at it and you know, you let me know what you think of that. And then this is obviously different because it's, you know, operating in reality versus in one and then operating in, you know, kind of reality plus fan fantasy world, a fan dream level or my dream offseason would be for the Yankees in a perfect world. That's what this is. And then my next video, I'm gonna talk about my predictions of what I think they'll actually do and how it compares to these two videos. So if you haven't subscribed yet, do that right now. Hit the notification so you don't miss this type of stuff, especially if you like baseball content like this. And I got a bunch of other videos coming up. Trade proposals for players. I've got my MLB free agent predictions I'm working on. I've got stuff on the CBA winter meetings. And I had a couple of great ideas from people um, who the Yankees should protect in the Rule 5 draft and, and a bunch of other ideas too. So I'm going to be putting videos like that together as well. But let's get into my dream Yankee season. Number one, this is actually in my what I think the Yankees should do. One one find a way to acquire Brian Reynolds in a trade from the Pittsburgh Pirates. And I said this too. I know recently he's talked about an extension. Um, he's got four years left on his deal before he's a free agent. I would have no problem adding four years beyond that and buying out his four years of, uh, of arbitration for the Yankees and giving him a big-ass deal. And he'll only be 34 at the end of it. He's 26 right now. But he's exactly the type of player that the Yankees need as a building block. So... You know, so versatile, plays multiple positions, switch hitter, athletic, steals bases, does a lot of the little things. Yankees need more players like him, okay? So he'd be a guy, be a first number one get for me. Hands down, I'd be going, I'd be calling immediately, asking the giant, uh, the Pir Pirates GM, what do you want for Brian Reynolds? Okay, and if it's, you know, if they can get him without giving up Volpe or uh, Dominguez, I'd be, and I think they can, I'd be all over it. I'd be all over it. Next, um, acquiring a top catching prospect. Okay, I have two guys in mind, um, Shea Langoliers from the Atlanta Braves and the MJ Melendez from the, um, uh, from the Kansas City Royals, who's blocked currently by um, Salvador Perez, superstar catcher. And I've got another guy who's with the Padres, but he's one of my trade proposals, and I think you'll like that one as well. And then that, that's coming soon too. But these guys, you know, they're young, dynamic players. They're top 100 prospects. They're in the top three prospects on each team for the Royals and the... Um, and the Braves, and they would represent a, a nice young catcher who is also a prototypical catcher as well for the Yankees to eventually replace Gary Sanchez. And it also gives them the opportunity, if they want to move on from him this offseason, they can. They pair this young kid with Kyle Higashioka, and now you have a good defensive catcher paired with another good defensive catcher. And somebody who'll be locked into the game, he'll be motivated to do well and play hard and compete with Higashioka. Sometimes I feel like Gary Sanchez is not always mentally in the game. It's a, it's a frustration that we have with Glaber Torres, too, too many mental lapses. When they're on, they're great. When they're off, they're just completely clueless and not interested. And that's something we need to move on from. So a top catching prospect who can eventually supplant them and become the long-term Yankees catcher is of utmost importance this offseason, okay? They're not going to get the number one or number two pick in the draft anytime soon. So Adley Rushman's of the world, you know, are not happening, right? So the Yankees have to be realistic and go after a team's top catching prospect. Number three, acquire Matt Olson from the A's. I said this to what I think they should do. This is part of my dream as well. Olsen from the A's would be phenomenal. Okay, your first base, you give away. You know, if you have to go, you have to give up Torres and Voigt, you give up Torres and Voigt. You have to give up uh, um, Ols, uh, uh, Voigt and a pitching prospect. You give up Voigt and a pitching prospect. Voigt and someone else. Voigt and uh, Geo. You give up Voigt and Geo for Olsen. Okay, and you want to make it into a blockbuster, obviously you add Matt Chapman into this and make it into a huge trade, but the Yankees need to get Matt Olson over here in first base. He's got two more years of control until he's a free agent. And now if you add Brian Reynolds and Matt Olson here, that's completely you know changed the lineup and changed you know the dynamic of this Yankee team so far. He's an elite defender, he's a two-way player, offense and defense, and he would be a perfect fit here and hitting hitting balls over that, that short porch in Yankee right field. He would look perfect in pinstripes. Okay. Number four sign Carlos Rodon and acquire Luis Castillo from the Reds in a trade. He's got two years of control left. Rodon's just going to cost money. He'll cost a lot, but two frontline starters to put behind Cole to make it life a little bit easier on the back end of the uh, on the, of the rotation would be ideal. Okay, Cole should not have to shoulder the load of a rotation that's either injured or wearing down or just not deep enough. Shouldn't have to do that. He was gassed at the end of the season. Even though he's throwing hard, he was clearly gassed. So... Adding two frontline guys would make a world of difference in the starting rotation. And I'm going to go over my rotation, my bullpen, and my lineup shortly. So um, that's number four. Number five, find the taker for Aaron Hicks, Luke Voigt, and Aroldis Chapman if he can. <clears throat> okay? 
And even guys like me, Chad Green's possible, you know, uh, uh, Glaber Torres maybe, uh, Gio maybe, depending on who they get in return. Um, there's set of some other guys you can move as well. But if you find a hit, you know, you, 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 you're clearing up some payroll space, you can move, I mean, probably Chapman to a team that's starving for a, or any, a front end reliever who feels like they want to move away or two moves away. He's a good get there. Hicks would be a better fit somewhere else that he's not blocking Greg Allen and guys like that in center field. Um, but I mean, my, I don't know if they're going to keep him yet. He's 50 50. Cashman is a, is a Hicks guy, so he likes Hicks and he's alluded to that fact. But um, we'll see what happens here. We, we'll, we'll see what happens here. And again, um, you know, if he stays, he stays. But I, if we can find a take it for him and get the payroll relief from him and Chapman, that just opens up more possibilities for him to invest in pitching in other areas. Other areas being like another versatile infielder. They bring in Marcus Simeon. Um, that's a huge boon. Or I would take him or Chris Taylor right now. I would move on. I would pass on Correa. I would pass on Seager, even though he's a lefty. Um, I would pass just because the cost is going to be way too high. And again, the Yankees did fire their, you know, their infield coach Phil Nevin. And they fired Marcus Timms now, and, and PJ Pilater is the assistant hitting coach. So there's going to be some different blood, and they're working with the hitters and hopefully, you know, making the infield defense better, which was very questionable the last couple of years. So we have some new coaching blood coming in at some point soon. But Marcus Simeon would be a great fit. Plus, you'd be taking him from Toronto, keeping him from Boston. So it would be a benefit to the Yankees. Plus, you slide him in that lineup, and let's say you add Olsen and Reynolds, and you have Simeon in there. Like, could you imagine the possibilities? And you still have Judge and, and Stanton too. Oh my God. Like, seriously? Murderer's Row again, okay? And lastly, acquiring Aaron Bummer for the, for a left-handed reverse top pitcher for the bullpen of spot starting and signing Grayson Iglesias. And now some of these are similar to what I think they should do, and some of them are, you know, some of them are kind of outside the realm. But this would be obviously my dream uh, Yankees offseason. And there's, there's not a move on here that they can't realistically make. Um, you know, I've got some crazy trade proposals coming up, but I wanted to put that in here. I wanted to keep this... A little bit more aggressive than realistic, but not completely abandoning realism. So, and I hope that I've accomplished that. Aaron Bummer again is under team control for five more seasons. A versatile lefty. He's got some Chris Sale in him. He's got some Rodon in him. And and then if you bring in a Rodon and a Bummer, then you know two teammates who can, in a new environment, they can help each other become more comfortable in New York. But Chicago's not a chump town either. You know they're a tough town as well. So they're familiar with the bright lights. Both of them. And Ray Iglesias, another power arm in the bullpen, because I will be moving on from some guys. But as this stands, my starting you know, rotation would be Cole, Garrett Cole, um, Luis Castillo, Carlos Rodon, Jordan Montgomery, Jamison Tyon. And not necessarily in that order, but we have two lefties and three righties. Okay, Bullpen, we've got Clay Holmes. Um, who else do we have here? Luis Severino, Nestor Cortez, Domingo Herman, Ray Iglesias, Aaron Bummer, Johnny Lasagna. Um, and Steven Ridings, and maybe a Wandy Peralta too, or something like that. Um, but they moved on from him. If they moved on from Chad Green, I'd be okay if they had this group right here. Lineup: Brian Reynolds at center, Judge in right, Matt Olson at first base, Stanton at DH and on occasional outfield, um, Marcus Simeon at shortstop batting six, Gallo batting seven, playing left field, um, Geo at third base, or Matt Chapman at third base batting eighth or maybe a little higher up if it's Chapman. And then let's just say Shay Shea Langoliers or one of these catchers catches on. Uh, the Yankees get one of them and they bat ninth. That to me is a, is a ridiculous lineup. And my four-man bench will be Tyler Wade, Kyle Higashioka, Greg Allen, and um, Oswald Peraza. So versatility in the infield and the outfield. And um, with, with Esteban Florio kind of laying in the wings if he's not moved for one of these players. So, but I, I don't think I don't think we should be blocking Greg Allen anymore, or even Estevan Florio shortly behind him. I think these guys should get opportunities anytime they can. And again, this to me is a dream Yankees offseason. That lineup is ridiculous. That rotation is ridiculous. That bullpen's ridiculous. They would be so such a better team, and they have much more contact hitting, much more clutch hitting, right? Much more um, hit and run, a lot of different things. Much more versatility and athleticism. Exactly what the Yankees need. So. That's my dream offseason right there. Let me know what you think. What's your dream Yankee offseason? Okay. Um, let me know how you would construct it, what your lineup might look like, your rotation, your bullpen. I'm, real, I'm really curious to see. Um, and again, I think the Yankees offseason, they're going to need a multiple offseason kind of turn around to really, really get back on top. It's going to be one or two or three offseasons, but this one right here would surely get them on the right track. So 
I'll give you my predictions next video. You let me know what you think of that one. Have a great day. Talk to you next time.